Hi, and welcome to Studio 301 in Cologne. Have fun watching the third part of our drum recording tutorial. Now we have everything we need for the recording of a drum kit. A drummer? This is Nikolaus Sturmberg from the SAE in Cologne. His drum kit and the microphones. Before we start with the placement of the mix, I have some hints and tricks for you. The drummer should set up his kit for a comfortable position, so that he is not handicapped by anything later on. He should adjust all sizes and heights as well, before you place the microphones around the kit. There is nothing worse than having placed all the microphones around the kit before the drummer has adjusted, because then you have to start again and that means, obviously, a lot of work. You have to take your time setting up the mics properly. It's also important that nothing squeaks or makes strange sounds on the drum kit. Take care that all screws are fastened tightly and the foot pedal chain is oiled. Sometimes when people remaster recordings from the 60s, you can even hear that foot pedal squeaking, which also might sound interesting. When it comes to setting up the microphones, you should be aware not to disturb the drummer in his flexibility, because he won't play well if he always has to avoid hitting the mics. It's essential that his flexibility is guaranteed in order for him to perform optimally. This means that you always have to talk to the drummer and ask him whether he is disturbed by anything and if you should change the setup or if he could change the height, for example. It's always good to have the drummer around while you set up your microphones. The microphone stands should all have rubber feet so that they are decoupled from the floor. And it's important that all screws are very tight. You might know the situation when everything is tight, but it's loose up here. That's not good because there's a lot of power around the drum kit and a lot of motion, so everything else must be very tight. You also have to be aware that the microphone stands do not touch the drum kit or each other, because that produces subsonic noise. Take your time in arranging the cables properly, so that in case a microphone starts to crack, make a noise or hum, you can easily change either the cable or the microphone. If you don't arrange the cables properly, it could also happen that somebody stumbles over them, causing the ambient mics to fall down, for example, because their balance point is very high. Okay, let's begin. We will start with the hi-hat on the left-hand side of the drum kit. That's better for the camera position. First, I want to demonstrate something to you. Could you please open and close the hi-hat? Okay, thanks. Can you see the strong air draft of the hi-hat? Never put a microphone in front of that draft, because you could destroy it, and the sound is not good. We will now take the small condenser microphone, the Neumann KM84, and I'll show you how this microphone sounds from a near position, then from a distant position, and then I'll gradually move from close to far. Could you please play a pattern of eights? I'll now place the microphone where I think that it sounds good. You have to be aware of crosstalk from the cymbals and the snare drum. That means if we place it at the edge, they are the softest harmonies. Whereas the sound gets harder in the middle. And it's now off axis to the cymbal and the snare drum. We choose approximately 15 to 20 centimeters distance to the edge. Remember, edge equals soft, middle equals hard. Let's have a listen. Okay, I think one could hear that very well. Let's now continue with the snare drum. As you can see, we record the bottom of the snare with the AKG C414 condenser microphone. I choose the polar pattern figure 8, so that the 8 is directed at the carpet that does not reflect much. 
and surely to the resonant head and the snare. The off-axis is directed at the bass drum, because we want to blend it out. We could also choose the polar pattern cardioid and could turn the mic just like this. But we decided to take the figure 8. Let's have a listen to both possibilities, starting with the figure 8. Set it up close to the resonant head to avoid crosstalk from the bass drum. We also switched on the low cut because we do not want to record the sub bass of the bass drum with this microphone. This is the figure 8. Now we switch to the polar pattern cardioid and turn it away slightly. That would be the setup for cardioid with the off axis in direction of the bass drum. Let's have a listen. Okay, and now alternate bass drum and snare drum. Now again with the figure 8. Please play bass drum and snare drum again. Okay, I hope you were able to hear that properly. Let's now go on with miking from the top. Here we have the Shure SM57 with polar pattern cardioid, an off-axis 180 degrees directed at the toms and the cymbals. You have got to find a good compromise here. Let's listen to what the snare sounds like at the rim. We'll see it sounds more like the drum. And directed at the middle, it would sound softer and would record more of the room. We'll now have a listen, first with the microphone directed at the rim. Could you please play three hits, Nicolas? Now again three hits directed at the middle. That will sound a bit more roomy because of the reflections, so we'll choose this position here. Are you able to play that way, Nicolas? All right, then let's continue with the toms.